there are a ton of new open source AI models coming out that are better, faster, cheaper, or more specialized than GPT. A great example is Mistral. Mistral came out pretty recently as an open source model and is much cheaper and almost just as accurate as GPT. And so a number of tools like Perplexity are actually starting to build on top of Mistral. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how you can actually use VoiceSoul's knowledge base as a vector database with a third-party large language model like Mistral. So for all of you developers out there who are experimenting and don't want to spin up your own vector database, this is where you can use VoiceSoul to save a bunch of time and connect it with any third-party models that you have, whether that's Mistral, another open source model, or perhaps it's a fine-tuned model on GPT's platform itself or a locally hosted one. Heads up, this next section is intended for developers or people with a little bit of understanding of JavaScript. It's a more advanced application of using VoiceFlow and a way that you can use it to speed up your development of custom applications. Now, VoiceFlow actually has its own built-in vector database. So here I am in my VoiceFlow project. So I've got my actual project over here and you can click into our new CMS. And in the knowledge section, you can go ahead and add your data sources. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload a bunch of URLs here. And this is gonna import them and actually start vectorizing them and turning them down into chunks that I can now access via the VoiceFlow API. So you can see here that it's processing and uh, parsing all the documents into chunks and vectors. And once it's done actually scraping the web pages, and you can see some of them are done over here, you can see all the different chunks uh, that it was able to pull out from the document. So now that this is all done, we can run a quick test in here to do, see how it performs. So how do I build an AI assistant? And now this is going to search through the knowledge base find the chunks that are relevant, and then actually synthesize it with a large language model. So you've got a really good answer here. And if I check below, I've got my three core sources. And you can see that these chunks are being passed to GPT-3 Turbo to create an example response. Now, one really interesting with, thing with VoiceFlow is that whenever we design something, so just like the knowledge base, you can actually access all the APIs to make this possible. And that's what we're going to use to be able to use this with a custom large language model. So what we'll be able to do is bypass the models that are available here, and we'll be able to use our own model at no additional cost. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use the VoiceFlow knowledge base API to send a question to our knowledge base and return the chunks. Then we're going to take those chunks, save them, and actually send them to Mistral or a third-party model to return an answer. First, I need to go ahead and grab my API key that I can get from our knowledge base doc here and open our documentation. If I go ahead and drop in my API key here, I can actually test out this API. I need to add a question here for this API to work. So I'm going to say, what is a vector database? And you're going to be able to see what's happening behind the scenes here. Awesome. So here is our response. And so in the response, you can see that a couple things are actually returned. The first one is that different chunks are returned. So these are the chunks that we saw. So it returned two different chunks. Uh, and that's just because we've got a limit here. So let's go ahead and make this maybe five. So let's try it again now. Great. So now we've got five different chunks that were returned. And the first thing you see here is score. So this is the similarity score. So if you remember in that 3D map, this is how close this chunk is to the question that we ask or the vectors are. And so the model determines about 75% similar or 0.75. And so we've got about five of them. So the first one here has the actual chunk ID, the document it came from, and then the actual content, which is the chunk itself. And remember, the, the better your document, so the like the more structured the text is, whatever it might be, the better the chunks are going to be. And so it's got the content here, the chunk, the source, the URL, the name, etc. And it does that about five times for five different ones. And it looks like it found some pretty similar chunks. Now, the next thing is that you can see it actually did come up with an answer because in this model, it's actually sending it to an AI model to answer, and the model is Claude V1. And so it did use tokens and it came up with an answer to say, you know, vector database is this. Now, one really cool thing about the voice API is that you can actually turn this AI synthesis off. So if you see here synthesis, let's turn this to false. And you can see it's updated in the body here. And if I try it again now, you notice that it just returns the chunks, but it uses no tokens. And this is because now you're just using the voice knowledge base like a vector database. You're putting in a search query and you're getting these chunks. Now, this is exactly what I want if I want to use a third-party model like Mistral, like we're about to do. Because what I can do is I can just take the chunks here, and then I can use an API call to pass them to the model that I want. I can even do some more complex stuff. So for example, I can see here that the confidence is pretty low. So I can set a filter to say only accept a confidence above 0.75 or a similarity score above 0.75. 
And that way I can search through a bunch of different documents and then get the best chunks that are the most relevant. So if I ask something like, how do I build an AI assistant? You'll see that some of the chunks we have have a much higher similarity score of 0.87. And this is because we actually have more documents related to how to build an AI assistant in the URLs that I uploaded than deep dive documents on what a vector database is. And so this is great for being able to just induce a base similarity score to make sure that whatever answer you're going to give the user is accurate or at least is reflective of the question that they're asking. So now we're going to head back into VoiceFlow. We're going to look at some of the more, some of the developer tools we have to be able to work with this API and actually pull out this information. So back in VoiceFlow here, there are two ways that I can leverage this API. The first one is an easier way with something called the API step. So that allows you to make an API call, but something we introduced more recently that's better for tasks like this that may involve a bit more complexity is a feature called functions. So functions is in the CMS here. And what it does is it actually allows you to make fetch calls to an API and then write JavaScript as well to transform them. So if I start a new function here, and I call this example, we can see what it looks like. So it gives me an actual code environment here to start writing my code in, and I'm able to define input and output variable. Now input variables are what I'm going to get from my project into the function. And the output variables are what the function is going to create. And so in VoiceLow here, you can see I've actually created two functions already. And so you can see here that I've got some input variables, which is the API key for my VoiceLow project, and then the question. And then I've got some output variables, which are the chunks uh, and an error message, which I'm then going to pass into my next function, which is actually going to send all this to Mistral. So I'm sending in the chunks and an API key, and then asking the question. So let me show you what I've built here for the get null based chunks. Now you can also download both of these functions. Uh, I'll link to it in the description just to save you some time. And so if you want, you can import them via this import button here, but I'm going to walk you through the code that I've set up just so you can understand what's going on here. So in the get knowledge based chunks code, I'm mainly doing two things. The first one I'm doing is using the fetch request to call an API. So to call the knowledge based API that we just looked through and actually get the chunks. So just to walk you through each part of this, the first thing I'm doing here is grabbing my input variables from the canvas. And so I've got my question that a user asked in my voice API key. The next is I'm just defining the UR, the API data. So I've got my endpoint here, which is the query endpoint, and I've got my body, which is a chunk limit of five. So this is false. And then the settings actually don't matter because I'm not really using these because I'm just returning chunks. And here I've got my question. The next part here is I'm just actually making the API call. So loading the API key, the URL, and the data that I just defined up here. And I'm just putting in this try catch block. So if there's an error, I can catch it. I check for a couple errors down here. And in this line, I am saving the response from the API into a variable called response body. And then I'm going to start parsing it. So here I pull out the chunks. And so if you go back to our other example, you can see that in this API response, inside of, inside of chunks is where our chunks are. So I'm just pulling that out because I don't really care about this other information. And once I've got the chunks, I'm filtering them based on a score. So I want to make sure the score is above 0 0.8. And then I'm also just removing any other information. So the score, the chunk ID, the document ID, tags, all the rest, I, we can get rid of them. I just want the information and then the sources. That's it. Then finally, I'm just passing that out into a variable called clean chunks. And that's right over here. So if I go ahead and test this out, and the way I can do this is by actually dragging out this function onto the canvas like this. I can select get knowledge based chunks. Now I can start building the rest of my project. So let's do, hi, what can I help you with? We're going to link that up. Then we'll use the capture step because I want to capture a question. So we're going to capture the entire user reply and we're going to capture it to a variable called question. So let's just create a new variable in here called question. Great. Now whatever user says will be captured in here. We're going to take our functions block that I just created, connect these up. And now we're just going to map these together. So for question, I'm going to use the variable question that I just created. And then for the API key, we need to grab our voice flow API key, which was in our settings here. And I'll just go ahead and actually put this up top here. So via API key. And this way it's a bit easier for me to create. So I'll just say via API and we'll just put it in here. Then we can map this variable together. And now it's a bit easier for me to keep track of. Now, outside of this, the function is going to process clean chunks and an error message. So I'm just going to save these in a variable called chunks that I create. And the error message will go into this error one. And now we should be good to go. So what I'll do is just 
print this out to the canvas here, so you can actually see what it's returning. So let's run a quick test here. Hit play. Hi, what can I help you with? How do I build an AI assistant? Now it's going to send this to the knowledge base. You can see that it actually grabbed all the chunks here. So I've got a debug message that's actually showing me everything is grabbing from the URL. And you can see here that I just printed out the chunks to my step block here, right? So it's got a ton of info. This is a content name. This is the actual chunk information. And it does this a couple of times because it's got two or three chunks, it looks like. So now that we've got this, now the next thing we want to do is we want to actually go ahead and pass this to Mistral. And Mistral is an open source large language model that is a lot cheaper than GPT. It is you know, just as accurate. If not, it's, it's pretty good, I would say. It is a bit slower, but because it's way cheaper, maybe it's something you want to use. And so to do that, I can now do two things, right? I can use the API step to make an API call to Mistral, or I can build a function for it. But let's go ahead and see where I can access this. And to do this, I'm actually using a tool called Together. Together is really cool because it has a bunch of open source models that you can access and play around with. So I use this just for testing out. But here we've got uh, Mistral 8x7b. We've also got a bunch of ones, other ones that are built. Uh, and they just host it and you can use their API and it's a lot cheaper than should be to use. So this is one that I like playing around with, but uh, feel free to use your own. If you have a fine-tuned model, let's say on, on OpenAI's platform or a fine-tuned model hosted somewhere else, you can also use those. I'm just going to use this endpoint because it's a bit easier. So looking at the Together documentation, the actual API call for this model that I'm looking at, Mistral, is pretty simple. So it's, uh, you've got your URL here, API key, content header, and then basically you're just saying, here's your model and here is the question. Uh, and this looks like it is a system prompt for the model. That's pretty much it, just a post request. So if I go back into Boisla now and I actually build this out and go back into, we could use the API step to do this and just drag in the API endpoint, the body, the headers. But I want to use functions again for this just because it's a bit easier to share. So I'll go back into functions and I've got one built out here called Mistral 7b. And I'll just walk you through each parts of this again. The input variables we're taking from the canvas are the chunks. So this is what we got from the last function. We've got a Mistral API key that I need to load in. And then the question. Saving those into variables in my function here because I'm going to use. Same thing as last time. I've got the URL. I've got the body for the URL that I'm going to put in here. And you can see that the way I've organized this is I've got my system prompt that says, answer the question using only the information provided. And then in the amount sent to, and then in the value sent to Mistral, I've got question is question, and then information is chunks. So I'm going to pass the question and the chunks to Mistral, and it's going to come back with a response. This is where I make the API call. So again, it's just uh, right here. So pretty straightforward. It's a post request, just checking for some errors, and then I am taking the answer. So this API uh, comes back with a couple of different things. Uh, in there is the answer. So I'm just pulling that out into the answer variable. And then now I am pulling it into an answer variable and putting that back out to the canvas. So pretty straightforward. If you want to learn more about functions, just hit the question mark here and that'll take you to the functions docs. And this will explain everything you need to know about actually creating a function. We're also going to have a landing page coming out soon with examples of different functions that you can use. And there's also examples of functions within here that use different calls. So now that I've created this, I just added a little image and a description. And if I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of the canvas, it looks like this. So in dev, I'm going to create a function step again. I'm going to select a function, Mistral 7b. Let's connect this together. And now let's map these up. So chunks is going to be the chunks variable that I'm saving from this function. Mistral API key, I'm going to add it right here. And then the question is going to be the question that the user asked. So for the API, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to use my Mistral one and just cut this part out. Great. So I've got a Mistral API key now loaded in, and I can go ahead and test this out. Let's map my output error variable, so answer to answer. And I'll add my text here and say, let's just pick the answer. Awesome. So connecting this up together. So now I've got a full flow where it's uh, taking my question, it's hitting the voice with knowledge base, it's grabbing the chunks. Then it's sending those chunks with my question over to Mistral, and then it's answering it in the tool. So let's go ahead and run a test and see if this works. Oh, looks like it ended in an error. So I got the error path here. I do have debug messages on, so let's just go ahead and turn on debug and see. So you can see here that right off the bat, it looks like the first one worked because I got all my chunks, so chunks received, uh, and I was able to retrieve all of my chunks. And then it looked like the function step 
But the next function step here is missing an input value required for API key. So it looks like I forgot to map these up together, but super helpful when it comes to debugging. So I'm going to go ahead and add in the Mistral API key and map it to my function variable. And now let's run this one again. Taking a bit longer, so no one's going to Mistral this time. And there we go. So a little cluster here on the prototype tool, but when you share this, it looks totally fine. So to build an AI system, it follows these steps, blah, 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 blah. And that's pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and hit publish. And I want to see what it looks like on an actual end chatbot. So I publish it, let's grab my widget code. Now you can go ahead and embed this onto your website. I'm gonna just render this on a web page here, just as an example, by pasting it into the console and it pops up here. So it's rendered on the page here. Let's go ahead and start a new chat. Hi, what can I help you with? How do I build an AI assistant? And great. So you can see here that it was able to actually respond. It looked properly formatted. And now I've got a custom bot running on Mistral. That's an open source model that I was able to customize. So that's pretty much it for the explanation. And so that's an explanation of how a vector database works, how you can use voice as a vector, vector database. And now you can go ahead and actually send these chunks to whatever third party model that you want and build them back into voice so and actually come up with an answer. So this is a great way if you're experimenting with open source models, cheaper models, faster models, niche models that you may not have in the tool. If you wanted to obviously do this all in one, voice has a response AI step where you can just use one of the models that you can use through voice flow. So Claude, GPT, et cetera. But this is really useful if you want to build more complex apps using your kind of backend systems or fine tuned models, you can do that in voice flow. And just a reminder, if you want to grab these functions, I'm just click the link in the description. You'll be able to just download the JSON file and then import them to save yourself some time. But then yeah, just make sure you can go through, you can modify the code however you want. Uh, and you can start using voice low with third-party models today. That's it. If you found this helpful, remember to like and subscribe and join our Discord. In there, you'll find the developer chat channel with a ton of developer resources. My name is Daniel. I'm the head of growth at VoiceFlow. And let me know in the comments what you want us to cover next. And we'll make sure to make a referral on it. Thanks. And we'll see you in the next video.